Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Okay, and away we go. We're talking. What are we actually talking about today? Today's podcast topic? Yeah. Fiber. Oh, of course. Got to get them poops in. <laughs> Let's banter about that. No, you have a banter topic and I'd love to hear it. I do. And we're you not going to- You called it an icebreaker, but we'll, we'll call it banter. Okay. We're not going to get to poop just yet. First, what do you love most about your home? Mm. I would say I love my home the most when it's clean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it's clean. No. Who doesn't? <laughs> right now, this is kind of like my absolute favorite time of year for the house because backyard and the garden is like really really vibrant and it is. bright and the vegetable beds are just going off and there's no like messy runoff from the rain everything is kind of just the recovery corner of the sauna and the cold plunge mm-hmm. is all looking pristine and inviting and when I stand in the kitchen making my coffee or my breakfast and I look out and see that Every morning, that's pretty, pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? You have a lot of new things going on at your home. I do. Yeah. I've been doing some work on my home. Not necessarily the fun stuff, but the necessary stuff. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing, and I have a lot of favorites because I really like my house, but my favorite thing right now is I love lying in my bed and my bed is next to a screen sliding door that Mm -hmm. goes out on a little patio where I have a little hanging chair. That's also a nice little special spot. But I love to lie in bed just as it's getting dark in the evening, which is usually when I'm going to bed because I'm old. And I look out at the trees and just the view of the treetops makes me feel like I'm in a tree house. Oh yeah. And it's so peaceful and the breeze comes in through the window and just makes me feel so cozy and homey and I love it. Sweet. Yeah. I hope you all listening uh, r- know that when we do these banter topics and there's a question that's posed, the hope is that you guys reflect on this yourself. Yeah. What is something special about where you live that you really cherish and, and love and then can connect to right now as you close your eyes and hopefully it makes you happy and it makes you feel, um, yeah, really good about what you've got in your life. Heck yeah. Cool. Great topic. No. So now we're going to dive into... Poop. Poop. <laughs> well, on What's that your note, favorite way to poop at your house? I mean, what's the, like, one of my favorite places is the toilet <laughs> and my squatty potty. I do really like a good poop. Yeah, who doesn't? Now we're talking fiber. Fiber is not just about pooping, but no. it, it's been something that we've I've shared a lot about recently on on social media. We've made some good content out of it. We're we're still working on ironing out some of the content there but some of the stories that i posted recently on fiber got a lot of interest from from folks yeah and uh you know there's yeah where do we even start i know i was thinking about this because i was thinking about how as a kid i would see these commercials for metamucil and i had this whole concept in my mind that fiber was for old people <laughs> that was like an old person topic that yeah. was like really important when old people are involved <laughs> <laughs> so now that i am old no <laughs> i mean i think it's just interesting for me to learn more about what the heck it even is why you need it mm-hmm. what does it do for you and just how it plays a role in your overall nutrition approach yeah good yeah well, I think um, it's funny you bring up the Metamucil thing. <laughs> My grandfather uh, used to take a big old scoop of Metamucil, slug it down every day. My dad is like is like that too, still to this day. And but my grandfather, the funny part was that he he called it his glop. <laughs> Not this Metamucil. This is such a grandpa thing. <laughs> and it was always funny because I remember my grandmother. This is a very Italian couple. Tony, do you take your glop? <laughs> like, don't forget your glop. I'm like, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> Papa and his glop. Um, nice. Which I 
which oddly enough, I was just reminded of the other day as my brother was like, he said something. He was like on a rant about something. He's like, oh, taking your glop. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I forgot it was called glop. Um, and then I was, I got on the Metamucil train hard in, uh, in medical school in like that college medical oh, school period where I messed was, up gut. I was so messed up. I was like basically living my whole life in constipation and just like needing glop after glop after <laughs> glop. I mean, I was, God, I was mixing, I was mixing this sugar free orange Metamucil with like vanilla protein powder. I was going to say, did this go in your protein shake? <laughs> Holy smokes. I had a creamsicle, orange creamsicle flavored. Uh, it was tasty. Hey, yeah, hey, don't knock it till you try it, Nate. I see you give me the old yuck. Don't yuck my don't yum yuck over his there, yum. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. And there was, uh, yeah. So, but what, what I had a fundamental issue with, and I still do to this day, but it kind of got me like, you know, really hating on the fiber thing was like, okay, people want to take fiber to improve. And one of the reasons people will supplement with fiber is to improve their digestion. Yep. But it's like, what else are you doing to improve your digestion? Like if you move every day, if you eat real food and if that food itself, you know, has some fiber in it, you get good sleep you know, you, you can, he like, your gut's going to be fine. Like, you can heal your gut and get nice, good poops. But you got to be, you, it, that, that can, for somebody who's got a messed up gut, that takes work. That takes building good habits and Lifestyle routines. change. And, and building consistency. Yeah. If you eat the same things, every like, the same thing every day, like, for, you know, and you, at the same time, and you... Go and, and and that food itself is not like horrendous. It's like a balance of protein and some produce and you get consistent sleep. You go to bed and wake up at the same time and you know, you move your body each day. I promise after like two weeks, your gut will be healed. You'll be like pooping magic, you know, <laughs> unicorn magic poops. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, that's work. That's habit change. That's, I got a chance. Oh, forget it. I'll just have some glop. Take the thing. Take the glop. Right. right? Um, and that might not even work for everybody. And that's why like the digestive aid aisle in the, you know, grocery store or the drugstore is got 50, hundred different products. Yeah. You know, there's, there's like the super strength glop. There's the x lax There's the, you know, all the laxatives. There's the enemas. Antacids. The antacids. Mm -hmm. Like all, you name it. Um, so, this episode is not about talking about fiber just to like get over terrible gut health. Um, that's like a deeper gut health, you know, topic. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I just was like, my gut was broken and I kind of grew up in this like household where, you know, that was just part of the norm. Like you just take this and this gets you moving again. And so I kind of was just like, I was on the medicine 2.0 mentality of like, this thing is broken. Here's the symptom. Here's the fix. There you're good. You yeah. just take this thing. When really I was like, how do I actually heal this thing from like completely? So I don't have to like be relying on this. And then fast forward many years later where it's like good digestive health. What are the, what's the value and the benefit of having a little bit more fiber in your diet as is? Yeah. Like, I'm already pooping good. So if you're in that category and you're listening, you might be thinking, well, there's no reason for me to have more fiber. I'm fine. I'm regular. It's like, well, maybe there is actually, you know, maybe, maybe the fiber has some added value to you that has nothing to do with you hitting the bathroom every morning after your first cup of coffee. Yeah. So yeah. What is, what is that? What are those things? Yeah. That's and what, what is fiber well even? Right. right. How does that work? What's going on in there? What is what is yeah. fiber? Right. <laughs> is it fiber and er? No, fiber is uh, you know as simple as like we can define it and describe it. These are parts of cell walls in plants, plant you know in plants that are indigestible, meaning. They go into you, you if you if you eat a plant, 
there's parts of the plant that you're going to digest, like the carbohydrates in the plant or the proteins in the plant, um, the fats in the plant, and you're going to digest and absorb them. But then there's all this other plant material that doesn't, it's, they don't, they're, they're, it's carbohydrate, but that is indigestible carbohydrate. Like we don't have the, the machinery in our, in our gut to break it down. So what that does though, that fiber is it kind of stays in the tube that is your digest digestive system and your digestive tract. And it just makes its way all the way down to your colon and then right out into the toilet along the way it does it feeds some of the bacteria that are in there um and in in the process of feeding some of the bacteria it might lead to some other uh byproducts that we do absorb and are very healthy for us um it it has the it has an impact on which microorganisms bacteria in our gut you know thrive and which ones don't mm -hmm. um so but at the end of the day it's something that you eat from plants that doesn't get absorbed therefore it doesn't add any calories to your um to your body you're not get, getting energy from it it's just a of you know plant cell walls that can't get broken down they keep going Some things that happen with fiber are um, when you consume fiber, and so here's the Metamucil concept. If you've ever taken Metamucil and you've put it into some water, when you put it in there and you stir it up, it just kind of looks like, you know, a suspended, like, powder. But then if you just let it sit there in the water for a little while, you come back an hour later, you stir it up, it's kind of this gloppy thing. It's like kind of gelatinous. What's going on? Do that a little longer, same thing. It just gets a little thicker. So this fiber is absorbing water. Where the fiber goes, so does water go. So that kind of is what can happen with the fiber in your digestive system so you take a supplement that's got fiber in it it's going to draw some more water into the digestive tract which is in turn going to help aid in you know elimination getting you to poop right this is uh also the same concept with a salt water flush this is another way if you've if, if you're ever constipated then a salt water flush is a pretty effective way to get you to go poop you take a very salty water like eight ounces with like so much salt that it almost it's like it's disgustingly salty like ocean water salty and you just chug that that salty goes into your your small intestine and then once it's in there guess what where salt is water goes so now your digestive system is going to pull all this water in from the surrounding tissue in your abdomen. It's going to pull it into the digestive tube. And now you got this big old, you got all this water in there. And what, what is, water wants to get out, right? So it just starts flowing down and it will help you push out, you know, you know, your whatever bowels movement that's not coming out. Yeah. So that's where fiber can, you know, that's kind of the, the, fluid dynamics of that i suppose yeah and then the other thing is that when you have uh, fiber in your digestive system you have uh, we we have this um there's this small organ the gallbladder mm -hmm. that is there to help produce um bile it when you eat like um, we need when we eat things like fat, you know, fat doesn't mix well with water. People know this when they mix oil and vinegar together. You don't they don't mix, right? So when you get fat down there into your digestive system, you need something to help break it up. 
and to help it mix in with everything else. So, cause you want it to break up and mix in so that the digestive enzymes can go to work on it and you can absorb that. So bile from your gallbladder is, it's kind of like a, it's like a, it's like soap, right? Soap helps to get the grease off. Yeah. It helps to break it up. And that's what the bile is doing. It's going to break all that up. Well, when fiber arrives in that portion of your small intestine, bile, kind of, you get some secretion of bile out there. Now, I don't want to get, one, I don't want to get too detailed on this because I think I might be maybe forgetting some of the nuances of my uh, digestive physiology. But essentially, in the production of bile, this is one place that people get rid of cholesterol. Like you have to you have to use cholesterol. You have to take some cholesterol to make bile. So every time you use you know use up your bile, <laughs> it spits out all the bile that you made. You're kind of having to like remake more with a little bit of cholesterol. So if you're having a lot of fiber, you're squirting out a lot of bile to break up that fiber and mix mix it all up. Right, you're getting rid of some cholesterol. Yeah, now I'm getting to the part that people are going to be familiar with. Oatmeal helps lower cholesterol. Right. 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 Why? How the fuck does it do that? Right. <laughs> exactly. Because oatmeal's got some fiber in it. Mm. And so when you eat the oatmeal, it's heart healthy. It helps lower your cholesterol. Like Cheerios. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's There's truth to that. Why? Yeah. It's not yeah. because it's like some magical thing. It's because it's got some fiber in it. Right. right. So you just eat fiber, you're going to be good. Mm -hmm. You know, oatmeal's not bad, but it's like oatmeal, you can get like, what, three to six grams of fiber but you also get a bunch of extra carbs and, you know, it's like, do you need those carbs? Because if you don't need the carbs and you can get that much fiber from a plate of broccoli too. Yeah. You can get that much fiber from, you know, a half an avocado and maybe that fits better into your, you know, meal plan or whatever. Or... I'm loving this marketing move from these <laughs> cereal companies. <Yeah. laughs> it's heart healthy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of people started eating oatmeal every day because of that. Right. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay, great. So how would one know if I'm low on fiber, eating too much fiber? How the heck do you gauge that? Well, fiber, I mean, we can t also talk about like the sources of fiber, but you know, you can, there are uh, recommended daily allowances for fiber. And, um, you know, I think I've read for every like, and, and this is not like the, the RDA, but like a good, maybe a good rule of thumb might be for every thousand calories that you eat in your diet, aim for anywhere from like 14 to 20 grams of fiber. Mm -hmm. So if you're on like a 2000 calorie diet, then like that's, we're talking 30 to 40 grams of fiber a day would be good. So that's like the average you know, the, the standard, the standard diet that all the food labels yes, are built off of is the 2000 2, calories a day. Um, you know, that 30 to 40 grams of fiber would be kind of in that zone. Okay. Now I think the RDA for that is even lower. Um, but that's just, a, that's the kind of the, the number that I play with. So I'm eating three, three, 3,500 calories, sometimes 4,000 or, you know, I'm somewhere between three and 4,000 depending on the time of year and what I'm like, what I'm doing. But like, okay, so now we're talking like 45 to 60 or maybe even 75 grams of fiber. And that is, that's a lot more than most people have, like way more than most people have and way above whatever the RDA recommended daily allowance is, you know, uh, that people need to get. Um, so why would I even aim for that? And what's the, what's, what would be good about that? Well, yeah. fiber itself the vehicles for fiber in in the whole in the food world are there's a lot of i mean the foods that ha are high in fiber also carry a lot of other great qualities with them particularly from an energy balance weight maintenance perspective long term because i have come to really appreciate just how important it is for people to uncover and discover habits, routines, and, and choices, food choices in general that they can, that are going to become staples for them, that they can more effortlessly have and maintain good, healthy weight 
for long periods of time. We probably all have about 20 to 30 foods that are our regular foods. If you can make the majority of those foods that are relatively high in fiber, then guess what? You're going to be eating fewer calories. You're going to be more satiated. And therefore, you're going to have a much better chance long term, not like day to day, but like over the course of months, years of just being in better energy balance, having to think less about how am I going to maintain a good, healthy weight? The same thing can be said for somebody who walks 10 to 12,000 steps a day. Somebody who walks 10 to 10 to 12,000 steps a day, regardless of everything else you do, they have an advantage in maintaining healthy weight long term. That's what the evidence in the studies show. So become a person who walks 10 to 12,000 steps a day. Become a person who's 20 out of their 30 main foods that they eat on a regular basis are high in fiber. Aim for that, you know, and, and create a routine and a ritual around having more fiber in your day. Combine those two things. Like you might just, un, that might be your unlock for maintaining healthy weight for a long time and not having to like constantly think about how am I going to get, you know, my weight managed. Yeah. So that's a huge reason why I have placed an emphasis on that in my, you know, building out the foods that work for me um, or that are going to be my main staples. And again, it comes back to the fact that when you eat fiber, it draws water into your system, which fills you up. It, you create a stretch reflex in the gut that basically sends a signal to the brain, hey, I'm kind of full. That's important. Mechanical stretch of the, the stomach and the GI, that communicates fullness back to you. There's not, you know, if you eat something that's got 10 grams of fiber in it and 40 grams of carbs, guess what? You just had 30 net effective carbs in your meal versus 40 grams of carbs that are all digestible. That's a, that, I mean, it's a small example, but that adds up over time. Yeah. And again, that helps with the maintenance of, of energy. Yeah. Right? Now there's other more nuanced benefits of having fiber in the diet, but this is why when they look at sort of like these big, uh, they're called meta analysis, like where they basically, it's a research paper that looks at all the research papers and it accumulates all the data. And then it like makes a general statement about all the fiber research tells us that people who eat fiber this much a day have all of these better health outcomes. And it doesn't tell you exactly what the causes of that or like, what is it about fiber and what's the particular thing that it does? Yeah. But it's really plausible that just this general more fiber equals better weight maintenance or better energy balance is why those people who consume it have better outcomes is because they're not overeating as frequently and being in an energy surplus, which leads to all the, all the chronic illnesses, you know, of obesity, insulin resistance, heart, heart disease, you know, et cetera. Yeah. So how do you get your fiber? What are your favorite foods or how do you work it in? Sort of the way that I, you know, one of the, the ways that we've communicated, like how do you build a plate of food? Yeah. It's start with protein and protein doesn't really have much, there's like depending on the protein source, there's not a lot of fiber and protein, especially if you're eating animal protein. The second thing is, okay, then put veggies on your plate. And then the next part is put a carb on your plate, optional. And then it's put fat on your plate, optional. But the two that like I've been really hammering lately is like you put protein on your plate, then you put veggies on your plate, and then you go down. Mm -hmm. Well, plants and the plant materials and the plant foods out there, they have varying levels of car of fiber in them some have more some have less then you move to the carb some carbs and i include fruit in this like fruits are carbs and rice pasta oatmeal breads those are other carbs 
Some have more fiber than others. So as I'm building my plate each day and each meal, I'm just picking things in those veggie and, you know, carb categories that have a bit more fiber in them. Um, certain fruits, certain berries, certain... Oh, and then, sorry, even the fats. When you get down to the fats, avocado is a fat that I would add to my plate that is got a, a, a an abundant amount of fiber in it, right? Whereas if I put butter on my plate, which is a great fat source and another totally acceptable one, it doesn't come with fiber. So not that I don't have butter and not that I'm like against it, but if I'm trying to build out, these are the foods that are going to be my go-to that I'm going to mix and match and use. Avocados are higher on my fat list than butter is because it's got some of those added... Uh, additional you know benefits to it yeah. and now some but a little bit of butter that might go a long way for me too because it's got some nutrients so i might want to have that there but the avocado's got some more fiber and then of the fruits that i really like well apples are high in fiber pears are super high in fiber berries in particular blackberries and raspberries are super high in fiber per, per you know uh quantity you know yeah. let's say a cup of it um so those are going to be on on my i mean people know that like why do you eat so many apples mark it's like oh it's because you know when pears are in season hey that's a go-to that's a staple and then when it comes to like veggies like i eat decent amount of carrots got some decent amount of fiber there right i eat the i'm back on the big ass salad like i can get a lot of fiber in that one you know dose um and then there's other foods that have a lot of fiber that I haven't really gravitated towards a ton, but like legumes, chickpeas, uh, those have a high, a lot of fiber. Um, some seeds do as well. So like chia seeds, flax seeds. Um, that's something that I've kind of like, okay, I want to, how do I re I want to reintroduce that into my, my group of 30 foods that are kind of stables and maybe it's a teaspoon or a half a tablespoon into my Greek yogurt into the overnight oats or something like that. That's yeah. another way. Um, I have oats periodically, even potatoes, sweet potatoes. So those could be other starch, starchy things that carry with them some, some fiber. Um, and it's just good to like track this stuff. People are like, Oh, I've never seen a tracking app that tracks fiber. And I'm like, BS, like you just haven't looked for it. Like all the tracking apps yeah. have this. It's, yeah, it's just, does. Yeah, it's like, you know, we're so focused on the macros. It's like, you know. Swipe over in chronometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Swipe yeah. over on any of them. Just yeah. like, um, and then, yeah. And then additionally, like, at this point, I've kind of been looking, okay, where's my sweet spot where I, because if you have way too much fiber, okay, and then here's the dark side of it. It's like, if you go from like, I eat 10, 15 grams of fiber a day. And then you're like, I'm going to get up to 60 because Marcus said, I got to you know, <laughs> right. do the math on this. You know, you just quadrupled your fiber intake. Guess who's going to be like really happy about that? All the microorganisms in your gut. Like you're going to be like feeding these bacteria with all this new fiber and things are going to get a little wild and there's going to be a party and you're going to be like farting and like, whoa, this feels kind of, I'm bloated. Marcus, you said this is good for me. I'm feeling bloated. And it's like, yeah, pump the brakes. Like. You wouldn't go from, I walk 2,000 steps a day on average because I checked it on my pedometer, but Marcus said I should go 12,000, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to six times that? Like, your ankles and your calves and your hips are going to hurt because yeah. you walked so damn much. Yeah. Um, so just kind of ramp up slowly. And now it's like, find what that sweet spot is. Like, you know, five to 10 grams of fiber at each meal, three meals a day, four meals a day, like... Hey, that's my sweet spot. Um, and just, again, like when you're looking at the choices, like I'm looking for something that's going to fill me up and not crush me with like a ton of extra energy. This is, this is a, this, this choice has a little bit more fiber in it. Awesome. And do you recommend supplementing if needed or at what point? I think it's sort of supplement as as needed or if you're if you're like really like okay i'm i'm having a a hard time getting there because one i don't like to consume like one i don't eat that many calories in a particular day like yeah. i'm i'm lower calorie than than you and um i 
don't want to be like packing giant things of vegetables everywhere I go. And, you know, I, it's, it's enough for me to just make a little bit of a change here. Uh, you know, then, then you could look at maybe adding, you know, a, a fiber supplement. I recently started, I switched my morning greens. Um, and it has like an additional, this new one I'm on, uh, has like an additional six grams of, uh, fiber in it. Um, and that's not why I started taking it. I was like, I was taking a green, a morning greens. Uh, and this one just tastes f so amazing. <laughs> um, anyway, shout out to transparent labs on that one. It's pretty good. But so, yeah, I didn't start taking it cause I needed fiber, but Hey, I have the supplement that I've been taking. I like to have it in the morning, checks a box for me, has some fiber in it. Great. But it yeah. doesn't mean that I'm not looking to get my fiber from whole food sources throughout my day. Exactly. That's all the questions I have on fiber. <laughs> How are you going to take that information and then put it into practice? Well, I mean, it's great to know because I have been aware of this fiber thing, but I've really spent the last month or two just getting the hang of tracking my food again and just meeting my calorie and macronutrient needs. Mm -hmm. And that's still my main focus is my first priority is to get my protein and my calories and get a pretty decent balance of everything else. You know that I choose whole foods and ingredients the majority of the time for those. So I'm not super concerned about, uh, you know, lacking a lot of things right now in my diet, but it's like, okay, well now when I feel like I have gotten into a steady rhythm of that, I can swipe over on the old chronometer and check out, okay, I've got my baseline. How much fiber is that? And yeah. maybe experiment with what if I intentionally include some more fiber rich foods, you know, bump that up a little bit. What I notice it yeah. depends on how I feel. Yeah, exactly. That's it. It's like, you know, maybe there's one food that you kind of make a staple that you're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to swap this in at these meals because it's, uh, it's got a little bit more fiber in it and yeah. I'm seeing that I'm not getting as much or, um, but yeah, like, and the whole idea is too, is that if you're building your plates with these foundational principles, you know, you're probably getting a decent amount in, um, but it's always good to kind of track it and check. And I think that it's worth looking at that specific number, swipe, swipe over on your, you know, on your, on your tracking app. And, uh, because you can fill up a plate with some veggies pretty quickly if your plates, depending on the size of your plate, like I put, you know, three baby carrots and, you know, three giant leaves of romaine, <laughs> yeah. you right. know, for my wraps. Yeah. And so it looks like you've got a lot of veggie on the plate, but that, that in total, it's just, it's three late leaves of romaine lettuce and a couple carrots. And then the rest is just meat and, you know, uh, some butter right yeah. so it's a it's a balanced plate but at the end of the day if you eat a number of meals like that you might have only gotten in you know 10 grams of fiber during the day or, or even less yeah and that's the thing with veggies it always surprises me how small their number is calorically yes so i'm like oh if i'm really gonna like make a decent chunk of my calories vegetables like mm -hmm. you can eat a lot of vegetables right that's yeah. why that's why going and maybe just looking at what are of the top 10 most dense fibrous foods that are out there by weight, what are three that I really like that mm -hmm. I can just include on a regular basis, yeah. you know? And for me, it's, it's the berries, it's, um, avocado, mm -hmm. um, and you know, apples have been, you know, or pears when it's season, in season, mm -hmm. but the, the buying a bag of frozen mixed berries, you know, is a really inexpensive way to get berries. If you buy fresh berries, they can be really expensive, which I, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy them. It's just that, you know, I have like a bowl of fresh, you know, frozen, excuse me, of frozen berries, you know, almost every day. And in that bowl, I get, you know, 10 to 12 grams of fiber alone. Yeah. Um, and it's not like a huge thing of calories and it's, kind of it's really satisfying it feels delicious I mean, it tastes delicious it's like this is kind of a sweet sweet treat mm -hmm. so just a good way to kind of get get some of that in awesome all right if you have more follow-up questions about fiber please let us know and as always if you have other topic suggestions or questions that you want us to dive into we're all ears head over to instagram dms 
and shoot us a DM at Satya Khan at Marcus Philly. We're happy to include you in the podcast. That's right. We'll see you next time. Bye.